Hello and welcome back to another episode of the 2020 podcast, bringing clarity to business, entrepreneurship and life. I am your host, Dr. Harbir Sayan. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me. I'm truly, truly grateful for all the support. Um, you know, everything everybody's done as far as listening and sharing, I, I really, really appreciate it. Um, and on that note, please do, uh, you know, take a screenshot at some point during this conversation. I know there's going to be tons of value that uh, my guest is going to bring to you today. Take a screenshot, post it up on Instagram or LinkedIn or wherever you, you like to go on social media. And of course, leave a review and uh, hit subscribe, all the good stuff that, you know, helps the podcast grow. And I'm, I'm really grateful for all that support. So uh, my guest today is a really good friend of mine who I've really been trying to get on the show for a long time. And it's really my fault that we haven't connected until today. But his name is Dr. Solomon Gould, who is a professional speaker, practice management consultant, author and practice owner of two private practices in the Twin City area. As a fourth generation optometrist with over 14 years of consulting experience for both private practice and public sector, Dr. Gould, who is my guest brings an unforeseen depth of knowledge, experience, and insight to the industry. An amazing person, amazing speaker, incredibly knowledgeable. Um, also happens to be an alum of the New England College of Optometry, which makes him even better. Yes, and also was a student. I was his anatomy TA back in, I don't know what it was, it 2008 or something, Saul? Um, That's right. Anyways, all the good stuff. Thanks so much for being on the podcast, Saul. Really, really appreciate it, man. Thank you so much for having me, uh, Dr. Cyan. It's a truly an honor to be here with you, man. I, I've been following your wonderful platform here for the last two years and seeing it grow into the successful platform that it is, man. And, and uh, definitely, I, I hope we, you get a lot of love for your show because for all those who don't really know the behind the scenes work that goes into these types of platforms, uh, Dr. Cyan has done so much behind the scenes work to make it as successful as it is. And and I hope that it brings fruitful knowledge for all of you guys. It certainly has for me, my friend. If no one else tells you it has, it's definitely provided me with a lot of great information over the past two years. So thank you. Thanks, Saul. That means a lot, man. I, that, thank you very much. I really, really appreciate that. Um, in general, when anybody gives me you know, positive feedback uh, or you know, even constructive criticism, I truly appreciate it. But from coming from you, it really does mean a lot. So thank you so much. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of behind the scenes work. I think that's something that maybe well, it's behind the scenes. So not everybody sees it, right? But um, that's part of the deal. And uh, when things start to work and kind of click, it makes it all worthwhile. That's part of the, the point of the podcast too, though, right? Is, uh, you know, I say that bringing clarity to uh, business entrepreneurship and life, I'm like trying to actually put a spotlight on some of these things that maybe we don't see going on behind the scenes. And I'm, this is, I'm, I'm going off on a bit of a tangent here, just that's kind of great. what yeah. you're saying there, but um, for years, uh, I wonder, I was like, man, how did that guy get to the end? And, and like, or how did that person get to that man or woman get to that level or get that gig or get that thing? And a lot of times I would ask the question, I would ask that person and they wouldn't give me a direct answer, you know, and I know that sure. you, you, you have uh, experienced this yourself or, you know, I know you understand this well, but they won't yeah, give definitely. you a straight answer. They don't really want to share the knowledge with you because they're, there's a sort of scarcity mindset probably of like, well, I, there's only so much of this stuff to go around. And also I found that people, I guess deliberately, I don't know if it's deliberately, but want to make it seem like it was effortless. Like, Oh, I just, I just got here. I just mm -hmm. woke up one day, you know, and, mm -hmm. and obviously it's not like that. Like you said, there's all this behind the scenes uh, stuff that goes on. And so I've, I have been very uh, transparent about that as much as I can with anybody I speak to, whether it's on the podcast, whether it's just, a friend or a colleague or someone in a totally different industry, I'd be like, look, here's how much time I put in behind the scenes. It might not, I don't know. I'm, I may not come across as graceful or polished, but it took me this mm -hmm. much effort. You know, it might take you less time. It might take you more. Mm -hmm. All those people that I, I thought, wow, that guy just effortlessly, effortlessly did it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm guaranteed that person was putting in a lot of time behind the scenes. They just didn't acknowledge it or, or, you know, Mm -hmm. I don't, for whatever reason, they didn't share that information. And then, so then when you're trying to achieve something like that, you don't know how much effort you're supposed to put in, right. And you, you, you fall short or, or you, you, there's unexpected hiccups and you don't realize that that's just part of the deal. You know, I'm so glad you bring that up and yeah, to your, to, to answer your question or to your point, I, I really have experienced that throughout all of, you know, in, in today's world to get anywhere, you really have to be willing to hustle a little bit. Um, and, and yeah, you're going to have roadblocks and people that want to try to get, you know, get in your way, but, um, you know, you, you really have to be tenacious and 
there's one rule of thumb when it comes to educators like yourself um, uh, or myself, if I'm working with a client or, or I'm speaking on a topic in front of an audience, they say that for every one person that actually raises their hand and either A, acknowledges your, 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 your wonderful knowledge or B, asks a question, uh, they say that for every one person, there's three others or more that have been thinking the same thing. They just didn't ask. So your podcast and all modalities of education, you know, worldwide, really, there's more people that are, are that benefit and receive great information than you hear about. So uh, for what it's worth. Yeah, that's, that's actually really good to know. I was never one of those people who put my hand up in class, but I was <laughs> always like, I had a question and when somebody else asked it, I was like, oh, thank God, you know, yes. um, but I'm, I'm starting to learn that more and more over time as well, you know, and so I assume if there's something I'm thinking or like a, you know, a question that I personally have now, I'm like, if I share it, there's probably somebody out there who's thinking or concerned about the same thing. So even if that one person, if I can connect with that one or two other people who wanted to hear that, that's worth it for me. So, um, you know, and so anyways, that was, that was not our, uh, not on our specific <laughs> list of topics to discuss today, but I thought that was an important one to share since you brought it up. I agree. It could be a behind the scenes extra footage if uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, that's going in. That's going in uh, in the real deal. That, and I'm glad it Love came it. up right off the top because that's such an important thing. All right, guys, I wanted to take a minute to thank one of our amazing sponsors for this episode. The first sponsor is Pacific Chartered Advisors. Pacific Chartered Advisors is a dedicated tax strategy, legacy and wealth preservation firm that helps companies and individuals such as physicians and optometrists maximize their wealth and achieve specifically designed goals. With a holistic approach to your financial situation, Pacific Chartered Advisors takes the time to explain the numbers and drivers of your endeavors so that you understand your position and you can plan accordingly. For more information, you can find them at pacificadvisors.ca or follow on social media at Pacific Advisors. And actually, I wanted to give you my personal opinion on uh, PCA because I have been working with them and specifically with Ryan Sahota there at PCA and uh, the whole team and Ryan specifically is truly dedicated, really diligent, um, you know, really understands what, the, what he's talking about and the whole team understands what they are talking about and what they're doing. And so this is something over the years I've just learned more and more how important this is to have someone to help with the tax strategy, to help to, to build that plan for the long term. And not only do they do that really well, but one thing that I absolutely love about PCA is the fact that they take the initiative to actually come to me, to give me advice, to give me uh, maybe a new direction of where we could go to get to those goals that I'd like to achieve more quickly um, or you know prevent some of the, the potential pitfalls that can come if you don't plan accordingly. So. Uh, really highly recommend Ryan and the whole team at PCA. So make sure you check them out at pacificadvisors.ca or uh, on social media at Pacific Advisors. And now back to our episode with Dr. Solomon Gould. So, um, Saul, so Dr. Gould, you have an MBA. You have a master's in business administration. Yes. Is that right? Correct. Yeah, you got it. I know man. so little about business. I don't even know that that the, the what the degree is called. No, um, it's it's expensive <laughs> nowadays. I mean, you can have an MBA. I'm glad you actually asked because you can have an MBA. Like my wife, for example, she has an MBA in human leader in, in leadership. So okay. she's um, in industry, and I did my particular MBA with an emphasis in healthcare administration. But you can do so many different uh, uh, routes, you know, above and beyond just the MBA. It's crazy. Right. Yeah, that, well, that's that's a good point because I think, uh, in, again, in my mind, an MBA was just like one, right. one type of degree that you just learned about business, period. But right. there's so many different specialties and niches and things that you can go into. So one of the biggest issues, I think one of the most common can, things that uh, doctors will, will state after they come out of school is that we get very little business-related training in school, right? And, and you know, many of us, myself included, want to become a business owner when we're done, but we actually don't have any training in business. So we just have to open up shop and then see what happens. And this is what you, you specialize in helping people like me figure that out. So mm -hmm. I really wanted to share, um, you know, share your knowledge here for, for other people out there. You know, not every OD wants to open up their own business, but I still think there's really real value in an associate learning about the business side of things as well. Um, Cause there's, there's, conversations that they can have or be part of that can help them um, perhaps get a raise or, or perhaps just serve their patient better or, you know, make, just make more money in a certain interaction as far as a conversion or a sale that comes. So um, we'll, we'll kind of go into that conversation, but um, 
I was saying to you offline that like, I wanted to start macro and then we'll kind of go to the micro and by macro, I mean, like, where is the industry heading right now? What do you see as far as just like general trend in the industry, as far as private practice, corporate optometry, that type of thing. It's a very general vague question, but please, uh, you know, share your thoughts on that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, if I may, before I answer your question and please uh, tell me to stay on track if I need to, but I'd love to comment just briefly on what you mentioned before, which, you know, not everybody wants to be a practice owner. Um, one thing I would caution anyone who has that, that mindset is that, and you actually touched on it to your point, even if you are an associate, you have no desire to uh, own your own practice. If you don't know at least, you know, business acumen 101, your contract, your compensation package uh, is steered, you know, driven by results of the business. And if you have enough knowledge to know what is fair for you to receive, you're going to be a much more, uh, I'll say rightfully, uh, re you know, uh, compensated associate for your time that you spend. And not everybody wants to work five or six days a week, but even if you're working two to three days a week, you want to make sure you're earning what you deserve to earn in those days. So um, to answer your question, um, and thank you for bringing that up too, Dr. Cyan, uh, industry right now, we are seeing a combination, I, I like to say a trifecta. We have, of course, market consolidation. You know, all the big players have merged. Um, they have vertically integrated is the term where they have acquired the insurance companies, the e-electronic record systems, uh, et cetera, insurance companies. Um, and, and then we also have private equity, um, which has grown substantially, especially even despite COVID in the last, you know, uh, five to 10 years, it's grown substantially. And then what we, we have, what we like to say, the William Wallace of uh, independent optometry that is hanging in there for dear life. And um, you can see, you know, that economically, you know, on a global scale, but we'll, we'll just keep it on a national scale. Economically, it's, it's, it's getting harder and harder for any specialty of any uh, within healthcare uh, to be able to economically provide health you know, services, uh, but also survive. It's quite sad, but um, the reason all these you know, big player, all these things are happening, this trend of increased private equity, increased uh, market consolidation with a, a little glimpse of uh, private sector is because economically it's, it's hard to provide healthcare uh, at the cost. Um, so you see companies like Walmart, you see um, Sam's Club and, and Amazon developing these micro clinics. Um, the reason for all this, this big trend is because, you know, like I said, economically, it's hard to sustain that um, model of care delivery. Um, and um, I hope upon hopes that one day we'll find uh, a way in the private sector to um, offset that reality. Um, the reality is that almost all private care of any kind, like I was saying, uh, uh, neurology, dermatology, et cetera, uh, primary care optometry, you, you lose money in the chair. And that's mm -hmm. why all these specialties optometry included have vertically integrated into, in the case of, you know, uh, psychiatry, pharmacies in house, in the case of dermatology, you know, uh, therapeutic products, uh, uh, in the case of neurology, you know, having MRIs done in-house uh, in optometry, we're seeing things like, you know, uh, dry eye specialization um, or, you know, uh, specialty contact lens, or you're even seeing now some cross-pollination between vision and hearing. So, there, so to answer yeah, your question, yeah. everything is really kind of going that direction. And we're seeing these trends. I hope upon hopes that we can find a way to um, reverse that reality for the private sector, because I, you know, I have a love, I have a, a, a love for loves for the private sector and I want to make it successful and sustainably so, uh, forever. But, um, yeah, that's a very long answer to no, your no, that's good. Uh, question. That, it was a very open-ended question, right? So there was no, there was no, uh, de definite answer there, but it makes sense with what you do, of course. And you, you can, it's one thing to just say, I, you know, I love private practice, you, but you, own two practices and you specifically consult with people who own these practices and help them grow them. So you really get to see the insides of it and, mm -hmm. and what actually is happening and what the challenges are for business owners. Um, you touched on the specialization side of things. That was something I was going to ask you, you know, maybe later on, but since we're here, mm -hmm. um, 
you know, there's a dry eye, there's contact lens, of course, there's you know, myopia control, there's all var varieties of different specializations. Do you feel like this is, is it very, is it important for private practice optometrists to get into the, something, some sort of specialization? And do you think it's helping the people who do? Yeah, definitely. You know, the reality right now with reimbursements for, for most optometrists, uh, depending upon your panels you are contracted with, um, you know, it's really hard to survive on the reimbursements um, status quo of the vision care plans. And, and, and unless you have a majority medical um, uh, patient database, it's going to be really tough to survive. So, so definitely, I, I do encourage all eye care professionals to specialize or in something or you can even retrofit a specialization into a practice. You don't have to open up a brand new practice and, you know, call it a dry eye practice or, or what have you. But uh, you can retrofit into your existing practice a specialty. The one word of caution I would throw out there is follow your passion. You know, the reality is that if you follow your passion, you'll be successful or successful follow. But if you're doing it just to survive, you might want to reconsider that, um, you know, of the specialties, you, you see a lot on dry eye and you're even seeing uh, the American Medical Association and the MD community working with ODs for the first time uh, on these dry eye uh, panels. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's really neat. Um, and then, of course, with, uh, you know, specialty contact lens sclerals and, and other specialty contact lenses, the MD community doesn't really have an interest in doing that. So, of course, guess where the referrals are going to go mm -hmm. to you for sure. Um, you're seeing some aesthetics right now as well. Um, there's a little bit less cross pollination between the OD and the MD community. If you go into the aesthetics route, of course, they want to hold on to all the aesthetics, but, mm -hmm. um, yes, I, they're very, they can be very profitable. Uh, if you do a specialty, uh, I'm, I'm a nut for sticking to your core competencies of yourself and make sure it's something you're truly passionate about. Cause if you're not, it will show and, and it, it may not be the most successful launch. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a, actually very good advice. Yeah. If you're just doing it for the sake of the dollars like trying to just get you know get the money out of it then it's not going to work as well because again going back to what we we're saying in the beginning it takes effort to start it up in the first place right you got to have the passion in it or you know love it enough that you're willing to kind of go through that initial slow and i'm speaking from my experience because we're mm -hmm. we're still in the process of building up our dry eye practice within the within the offices and mm -hmm. um you know it, it's gaining momentum now but like it was a fairly long period of time where it's like, okay, I got to figure out how I'm like, what are my protocols? How am I talking to patients about this? You know, how much is the treatment costing? Which treatment is better? You know, all these things you just have to, you have to, as much as you can prepare for it, you also have to do it and, and, and streamline it. And so you have to work through that period. Cause if you don't like it, then it's, you're not going to do it. And it's just going to be something that you tried once upon a time and didn't work out. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you know, from experience, having done this, that um, you're changing not just a, a practice or clinical offering, but you're changing a culture. And mm -hmm. for even your own mindset, you know, so oftentimes as ODs, we get on this kind of monotonous uh, routine of, of our dialogue and our practices. And, and you have employees, you, you want to get them bought, you know, bought into it as well. So changing the culture is just as difficult as implementing the, the, uh, the implementation, frankly. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that, that's actually so important. Yeah, I did a, a talk on that sort of the, I called it like a, my five steps to starting a dry eye practice. Mm -hmm. And um, the last one, which is, I said at the end, is probably the most important is the, the teamwork is getting everybody on board, making everybody's on, making sure everyone's on the same page, whether that means incentivizing them or just, you know, getting them in that mindset that changing the culture, like you said, um, that's so, so important. Mm -hmm. So um when we're talking about a business, a private practice, you know, what are some of the important metrics that we should be looking at, whether you're a business owner, whether you're an associate, you know, what are the, what are the KPIs? What are we looking at here? What do you call them that we should be uh, ke keeping in mind um, to making sure, make sure we know where we are at and where our practice is going. So it keeps to keeps growing. Yes, absolutely. That's another really, really good point. Um, you know, KPIs, it's, it's funny when you mention even just the term KPIs in, in an audience of ODs, m you know, mostly because to your point earlier, we didn't have that business training. KPIs is kind of like that shut down term. Then all of a sudden the ODs <laughs> yeah, are like, everybody's eyes glaze over. Right yeah. Now. It's like, I don't <laughs> want to talk about KPIs, but you really, even if, you know, you are, you have just one small practice, your KPIs are, are literally the catalyst for you, uh, for your practice's success sustainability at, you know, short-term and long-term success. So 
so to answer your question, I like to, as I say in the industry, when I'm, when I'm you know, talking with a client or an audience, I like to break down KPIs, which by the way, stands for key performance indicator. I like to break them down into two types. Uh, one, we call them the industry KPIs or hard KPIs. And those are things like you know, net, uh, net income ratio, um, uh, cost of goods ratio, uh, staff payroll ratio, productivity per hour ratio. You have all these metrics that show how you're managing your cash flow, uh, how motivated are your employees, and what is their output per unit time. Um, uh, you know, and then there's the what I call the soft KPIs, which I, I I developed you know many years back in my early days of consulting because I realized that wow, no two practices are the same, and if I compare every practice to the same industry standard, it gives them a sense of where they're at. But if Dr. Joe is, is practicing, you know, vision therapy in, in uh, rural Minnesota, and then Dr. Cyan is killing it up in Vancouver, you know, I can't really look at those two practices the same. So on those, I look at, um, I break the, the, the soft uh, KPIs into, and they're called practice specific or practice um, KPIs into the positions. So if you have a practice administrator, uh, what is her product or his or her productivity per hour? Um, how many uh, you know days of sick time uh, were utilized in that year? Uh, you know, uh, in the case of an optician, frames sold uh, you know per quarter. You have all these metrics based on each individual position. Um, so, really, a, a big a big important uh, you know aspect to look at is the productivity per hour. And I would encourage all practice owners. Um, well, actually, of course, the, uh, the cash flow uh, ratio is really important for the owner uh, who is watching the cash flow. But if you want to really monitor the pulse of the practice, I would encourage all practice owners to focus on the uh, employee productivity per hour and the professional productivity per hour. So you're looking at what is the yield per hour by the, the non-doctor staff and what is that of the doctor staff? And if you actually, it's amazing, um, Dr. Cyan, but there's, there's an incredible book uh, called Start With Why mm -hmm. by Simon Simonek. And, and there's something about if you have the results on a wall, on a chart, or, or shared electronically in a graph, and you start to see the variances between people and between doctors, you really start being able to see a trend. You're, you're easy to see a trend. And then you look at those year to year. So the KPIs, and I'm happy to provide the full comprehensive list, um, are really, really, really important. Yeah, wow, that's a lot more than I. <laughs> that's a lot more than <laughs> I would have would have realized. But um, so, can you? Uh, what is there? So the the productivity per hour. Sorry, is that was it? Was that the the, the mm -hmm. main one that you think mm -hmm. is like if somebody's going to look into something? Let's say they're starting from from scratch. And they're mm -hmm. like, okay, I got to start looking into KPIs. Um, what's like uh, step one in that, in that looking into that metric? Yeah, definitely. So, um, you know, based on the employee, so a good way to put it or to, to, to do the calculation is you find out what the total revenue um, generated uh, by the staff is, and then you break it down into the number of employees, and then you ge generate or break that down into the number of hours by that employee. And then you can separate it out so that you can see what each individual employee on average uh, generated. Mm. Um, and then you look at the para or the non-para, so the doctor uh, output revenue wise. And there are formulas, which I'd be more than happy to uh, provide to your, to your followers uh, for every, every ratio. Um, the same thing with the, with the professional. If you're, um, uh, you know, if you have three ODs and you can see one OD is, is generating, you know, 80% of the revenue, and the other two are, are generating the other 20%. You see that it's uh, definitely got some lack of morale, lack of incentive. Um, so um, happy to provide those specific formulas for you and your followers if, if interested. That would, be, that would be incredible. Yeah, please. If you, I mean, if you have them accessible and, and something that you'd be comfortable sharing, I would love that. Uh, again, I don't know how many people out there are, are interested in learning about these metrics, but I'm sure there's somebody. So if we could put it out there for... And if nobody else does, I'll look at it because <laughs> I know I need to learn more about it anyways. It's funny. I'm asking you these questions. I feel like saying I'm asking for a friend, right? But really, you know, it's like I'm asking for me because uh, I need to start implementing some more of this stuff in our practices too. 
Uh, and to your point, man, for every one person that asks, there's three or more that are out there wondering the same thing. Yeah. So absolutely. absolutely. So um, on that, you know, we're talking about sales and, and revenue and things like that. Any um, one of the things I know, again, personally, uh, I've experienced and other ODs have expressed as well as sort of this discomfort with selling. In fact, I was chatting with um, with uh, our, our, our rep and our sort of regional manager for, for a company, um, you know, one of our, our providers, suppliers. And um, I was just like, yeah, but they were talking about, you know, how, how to have a conversation with a patient about a certain product. And I was like, oh, that's starting to sound a lot like selling. And they like stop and like, oh, every OD says this, like, I don't like selling, right? Um, you know, let's say if I was to be very specific about this, like we're trying to sell a specialty or let's say a specialty treatment, like a dry eye treatment. Oh, do you have any advice for ODs, you know, to have these types of conversations to get comfortable in this sort of sales slash, you know, conversion type of conversation with a patient? All right, guys, I wanted to take one more minute to thank the second amazing sponsor of this podcast, Portfolio Planning. Portfolio planning helps medical professionals build a more lucrative future by simplifying the complex world of finance. Uh, as much as we know a lot about what we do, uh, you know, there's a lot of other complex things happening out in the world that uh, we don't quite, we don't have the time to really grasp uh, as well as we'd like. And that's where portfolio planning comes in. Their process combines investments, insurance, and tax planning to help you make every dollar count. This has helped them to become a trusted five-star rated firm to help you build and protect your future. You can find them at PortfolioPlanning.com and on social media at Portfolio Planning. And just like the, the first um, you know, sponsor that I uh, mentioned, um, Pacific Chartered Advisors, uh, I am you know, really fortunate and really happy to be working with Portfolio Planning as well, uh, specifically Vishal Gill who has been uh, just incredible, down to earth, incredibly knowledgeable, really helps, um, like, like I said, they're, you know, break down, simplify this kind of complex world of finance where, where you could really be uh, taking advantage of different accounts to put your money in or different places to put your money so it grows for you faster or doesn't cost you as much in taxes and all these other types of things that are just so complex when you really start digging through it. Uh, but, but Vishal's really helped me uh, understand it and, and kind of grasp that. And, and um, you know, he takes the time to work with uh, accountants and lawyers and everybody else on your team to make sure where everybody's on the same page. So uh, cannot endorse uh, these guys enough, Pacific Chartered Advisors and Portfolio Planning. Make sure you check them out if you are looking to uh, you know, make your money work for you ultimately in the long term. And uh, now back to our episode again with Dr. Solomon Gould. Yeah, so I'm, I'm glad you brought up the, the selling. Um, you know, I, 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 it took me 10 years to really find the, the book, the resource that really put everything into the words that I felt I just couldn't articulate. Um, Dr. Uh, Steve Vargo, we all know him. He's oh, yeah, a, yeah. yeah, he's a legend in, in the, the art of communicating uh, with patients. And he, I was blessed to be a part of the focus group behind uh, his, his course he'll be offering coming up soon. And the way he articulated, the way he describes this is perfect. So, you know, we all have to sell in our day to day. If you think about it, optometry is one of the only professions where we're doctors, but we're also salespeople. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and you, a good way to think of it, instead of thinking of it as we're trying to sell them, something we're trying to motivate them to take action is the way he describes it and you know no no good person or good doctor would try to you know sell someone on something they don't need uh, but the reality is there are so many people that don't even have the knowledge about what the options are they can't make an informed consumer decision and so i encourage all doctors to completely obliterate the concept of, of being a salesperson and, and really take a paradigm shift in your, in your thought process and think of it as you are here to motivate your, your patients, your consumers to change, to make a change that's, always, that's going to better themselves, that's better their day-to-day -day, you know, uh, functionality. Think, and you and I, we've all seen those patients. They come in, they're having headaches, uh, eye strain, and they're an accountant, right? And they're at the workplace all day long, but they love their, they, they, they love their cheaters. They, they work good enough for them. 
So you get done with that patient and you, you, you recommend a computer progressive or a computer lens that will ergonomically provide them that perfect fit. But then they have no interest whatsoever in following that direction. So a lot of it is your approach to the patient and, and with the patient. Um, you know, the classic 101, you know, reiterating what you perceive them to have said uh, in their initial complaint, uh, expressing that moment of empathy. Um, eye contact has, has been shown over and over and over to be one of the most effective ways to motivate change, believe it or not. There's some consumer psychology uh, studies out there that say just by maintaining that eye contact throughout their dialogue, that increases your chance of, of convincing them or not convincing them, but encouraging them uh, successfully is a good diplomatic way to say it, to, to move forward with action. And we all know it's it, it, through the daily grind, it's hard to maintain eye contact with all people throughout the whole time, especially with, since we're, you know, hamsters on the wheel with our electronic record systems and we're like trying to, you know, back and forth. Yeah. But if you can give them that moment of while they're talking, of, uh, of hearing them to give them that eye contact. And then when you articulate your recommendation, that eye contact is huge. Um, I would also encourage all when it comes to, you know, the concept of selling, um, make sure you understand this person as, as a human. Um, you know, again, kind of going through that daily grind, you, you kind of get on this, um, this monotone kind of, uh, I guess, uh, cadence. Yeah, um, yeah. Try to start fresh every single patient with who is this person? What is their personality type? Uh, what have they gone through in life perhaps? And, you know, uh, why is their demeanor the way that it is right now? How can I mirror that successfully? And by doing that, I, I have found over the years that that's been the reason I've been, you know, this, had the success that I have had um, with people is because I try to know every generation and try to know every personality type. And then it's not as much a thing of selling as it is just dialogue. And you're not going to get everybody, but that little secret sauce I just threw out there is probably mm -hmm. the best advice I can give anyone. That's amazing. That's excellent advice. Thank you. Um, again, I think um, a lot of times we're thinking there's some sort of like magical formula or like a trick, you know, somebody's saying some magic word that's like turning, you know, flipping a switch in people's heads, but it's all these little things, the, the eye contact, the the mirroring and, and really just being present, I think in, in a lot of cases is really, really important. Mm -hmm. um, and then of course, not thinking of it as selling. I think that's one consistent theme I've heard from a lot of people who, who are um, established in this kind of area, or they, they understand this, this, this concept of sales and the conversion side of things that most of them will say, it's not, you can't look at it as selling. You have to look at it as trying to uh, incite change, trying to help the patient, giving them the best option, and, and letting them know that that's the best option for them. And eventually those numbers start to go up, they creep up. And I've, that's what I've witnessed myself. Um, mm -hmm. It takes a little bit, of, it takes a little extra effort. Sometimes it takes a little bit of courage to simply state the thing that you need to state. I have a bad habit of saying uh, like, this is what I would recommend based on what you've told me. This is, you know, this is the best path. If you would mm -hmm. like, <laughs> if you would like, you know, like, how about I <laughs> yeah. scratch out those, if you would like at the end of the, and you know, every time I do, it comes off a little bit more professional. I'm not, uh, you know, otherwise it's a little too vague. Absolutely. Um, I, I admittedly used to do the same. I, I would always finish everything Dr. Cyan with optional, like, yeah. I, and no, you're hundred percent right. Cut that off. You, you, yeah. you, you're a doctor of optometry, you know, cut yourself off at that point, smile, keep your eye contact. And hopefully that, that's enough. You know, it's, yeah. but it's funny that you did that too. Cause I always, I had to break my habit too. Yeah. I actually did something very uncomfortable recently. Um, but, uh, it was, it was extremely valuable. I've been thinking about it for a long time. I haven't shared this actually with anyone. So, uh, you know, first time talking about this, uh, on the podcast here, but I had somebody sit in and, and, and observe me. Yeah. I graduated 11 years ago. You know, it's something that you, you we did in school. We had a, a preceptor sit mm -hmm. there and watch us and, you know, like tell us what we're doing right and wrong. We had to learn, but we still, have, we have to keep learning. Otherwise you're just going to get stuck in, in your, your, whatever you do and, and what you're doing might not be very effective. And in fact, there were things that I was doing that were not like that, for example, like if you'd like at the end of every recommendation that I make, or, you know, most of the time, many times 
Mm-hmm. So I actually had someone sit in the exam room with me, observe, and then we talked about it after I did that for, I did that a few times, a few days. And uh, so they, that person started to learn my tendencies. They started to learn what I'm doing consistently and, and help me break some habits. Mm-hmm. And I know that's a very uncomfortable thing to do, or I, I was for me initially anyways, I imagine it would be for others. But if anybody's out there thinking like, you know, maybe I could get better at something. I mean, the only way you're going to get better is by somebody looking at what you're doing and then telling you what to do better, right? Then imagine that's a lot of what you're doing, that type of stuff in people's practices. Oh, dude, amen to what you just said. Honestly, there are so many people out there who would benefit from just a humble, vulnerable um, exposure of how they could be better. And, you know, there's a lot of sayings out there, a lot of famous quotes like, you know, no growth occurs in the comfort zone. Um, You know, absolutely. That's the most brilliant thing that you can do is have an outside perspective. I, I actually had the same thing uh, inadvertently. One of my, you know, I've had them a couple times along the way. I've had patients who they really, um, you know, fortunate to, to know that they respect me a lot. And they say, you know, Hey, you know, I, I know you, you're all about being successful. Here's another way you could say that. And, and I've had along the way, I even had one person who her PhD was in communication and how to be effective with people. And she said, Hey, I just, Thanks for the exam, but I just want to give you some pointers that will help you be successful. So if you have a, pa- a patient, you know, say something to you, uh, don't take it personally. Use that as a growth opportunity. But if you're ac- like extra motivated and you're, you're a genius to have done this, Dr. Cyan, but I couldn't recommend that more to anyone. Um, you don't know what you don't know until you know it. And on that note, this is so random and off, off, the, off the charts, but there are also people out there, too, who are very uh, sent uh, sensitive. Um, so there, you know, one thing I learned early in my career, again, inadvertently on accident, um, I went to a, 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 a speech coach so I could learn how to be a better presenter. And she herself was extremely sense sensitive. I mean, I showed up day one, uh, not wearing any clone, but I of course had deodorant on, you know? So, um, she mentioned after a session was over, Hey, next time you think you come with, uh, without, you know, deodorant or at least, you know, scent free deodorant. Um, you are very scenty today. And I'm like, oh, wow, you know, I, <laughs> sure, I can make that happen. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I won't go the Matthew McConaughey route, but I'll at least, uh, you know, bring some, you know, scent free deodorant. But she did tell me also, she's like, just so you know, there are a lot of, of, of people out there who are scent sensitive and they won't say anything to the doctor if they're, you know, all cloned up or, or whatever, uh, perfumed up or cloned up. Uh, but so that's another thing, just completely random, but that's another yeah. thing just to be well, conscious. It's important about. to keep in mind. Yeah, yeah, I've I've had um, I've had a few patients over the years who would call uh, like they'll tell us ahead of time, like they're extremely oops extremely um, sensitive to to scent, mm. and so the staff would tell me like on this day you have this person like make sure you don't wear any cologne or anything like that you know scented mm-hmm. so um, mm-hmm. there's people out there who are um, very sensitive they'll tell you but there's lot, probably lots who don't say anything so it's important to, to be aware of that yeah so. All this talk about business, uh, you know, business related topics. Um, mm-hmm. This is like, you know, we were talking about there's always there's always lots of lectures and, and content out there related to the medical side. You know, there's glaucoma and dry eye and this and that. Um, that's where we tend to focus when we go for CE. We're always usually thinking, well, in the exam room, this will be helpful to me. But you are leading the charge in, in providing this business related content educational content for people out there like we're like what we're doing here but in a more in-depth more formal way um and i love the stuff that you're putting out there it's amazing it's 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 relatable it's uh, you know you absorb i absorb it well um and i don't really like these types of businessy types of conversations to be honest with you generally mm-hmm. um unless it's with you of course uh, <laughs> All to say, because there is a, another amazing uh, seminar coming up that's called the MBA in a day. And this is something that you are leading with the Academy of Ophthalmic Education. Um, and that's coming up very soon, just in a few days, in fact. Um, so I'd love for you to tell me a little bit about that. I'm going to, this podcast is going to go live on like September 7th or something. And the, um, the seminar is on September 12th. So I'm hoping, you know, people hear about this now so they can, they can really take advantage of this amazing event that's coming up. Yeah, no, thanks for asking about that. And, uh, you know, to your point, um, most of industry has a, a, a sincere focus on the clinical aspect of, of eye care. 
And truly, we need that. Um, I'm, I myself, back in the, my early days of practicing, I, I, I always looked for the clinical side as well. Um, I, I found over the years that there is demand from all sides uh, for more practice management, how to be a successful business owner, uh, entrepreneur. And yet the state platforms still um, have a, a very limited amount of your CE that can go towards that topic. So it makes it really difficult uh, for that to be an attractive item. Um, I am always striving to try to find the gray area. And so, um, you know, they say opportunities in the gray. Um, I wanted to find a way for those who are more business driven, uh, you know, interested uh, to have a conference where they can all come together and learn from those who have been successful in their respective pursuits um, but also for it to be a very open, interactive uh, experience uh, so that attendants, attendees can in live time on, you know, with the speaker, ask questions, uh, break into small groups. And, and actually someday soon, uh, this conference that we have coming up in September on uh, September 12th, it's a Sunday. Uh, it's, it's, it's presented on behalf of the Academy of Ophthalmic Education based out of Toronto, but provides CE to both the United States, Canada, and, and actually many other countries as well. Um, this particular conference is our first ever, we call it the MBA in a Day Conference. So this, we have an amazing lineup uh, of speakers. We have the legendary Dr. Cyan himself. We have do, uh, Dr. Jesslyn Quint. Uh, we also have Dr. Carrie Salzberg. And we have a speaker panel at the end where we're going to have a lot of uh, opportunities for audience members to ask questions. All, of course, uh, uh, have a lot of questions for all the speakers. And this is the first of what will become a series of many to, to come down the road. Um, down the road, what we'd like to be able to offer as well is a two or three day um, uh, option, um, either starting in the uh, Niagara Falls area, or perhaps a, a Caribbean cruise where we have you know, one and a half to two days of seminars and a half day or a full day of workshops or some conglomerate there in between. So everybody walks out very well armored to go back to the drawing board and reignite the success of their practice. Yeah, you got me at the Caribbean cruise for sure. That's uh, sign me up, sign me up, it's been too long. That's awesome. Well, um, where, where can people find more information about this, uh, about this event? Absolutely. So if you go and, and look on Academy of Ophthalmic Education's website, they have uh, the URL, they have the registration link to sign up for this initial event. Again, that's September 12th. It's a Sunday um, and it's all day long, starting at, uh, I want to say, 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time mm -hmm. and uh, going all the way up to, I believe, 615 Eastern Standard Time. Mm -hmm. So I hope and actually, in addition to the great speaker lineup, We'll also have some great, uh, uh, actually, a, a presence of a, a large um, uh, attorney uh, firm, some uh, financial uh, people who are very successful in, in both Canadian and U.S. markets. So mm -hmm. I highly encourage everyone takes advantage of those, uh, those people being present as well. Yeah, that's amazing. Great. Um, I'll put the link in the, uh, in the show notes. So if you're listening on Spotify or Apple, whatever, it'll be in there as well. Um, so definitely sign up for that. Um, I think it's going to be amazing. And, and personally, I'm excited. I'm humbled to be part of because I, you know, I know you, of course, with your, your wealth of knowledge, Carrie's practice in, in Ontario is, is amazing. And then Jesslyn is like, she, she has multiple practices, many employees, many staff. Um, so for her to be able to manage all of that, um, you know, I feel pretty humbled to be part of this group. I'll be talking more on the uh, digital branding, uh, you know, um, marketing, advertising, building your business through these, these platforms, um, you know, in that sense as well. So I uh, would love to see people there. Don't, don't, uh, don't under, underscore yourself, my friend. You are, we are beyond lucky to have you. And I can't wait uh, to have you a part of this and definitely more years to come as we continue to grow and evolve it. So thank you. Thank you very much. All right, Saul, so there's two questions I end every interview with. And uh, you may have heard these before, but I'd like you to answer them as uh, authentically as you can. You got it. So the first question is, if we could step in a time machine and go back to any point in your life uh, that maybe was a difficult time. Mm -hmm. So you could, if you'd like to share that moment and what happened, then you can. If not, more importantly, what advice would you give to yourself at that point? Oh, yes. Um, I would go back. I would go back to 
my transition between undergrad and graduate school. You know, I decided to take two years off and really work. I was I was accepted into medical school and I uh, literally like a month and a half from starting, I withdrew and I said, you know what, what do I really want to do. And for two years, I, I, I shadowed every specialty. I was really down on myself for not knowing for sure what I really wanted to do. And I worked and I was just in, I guess you could say a dark place. But if I could go back, I would have said, you know what? These are two years of freedom before you have to grow up and be a, you know, go into what you want to go into. It's okay. I would just say the words, it's okay to myself. It's okay that you're not there yet. It's okay that you haven't picked a specialty yet. Have fun in these two years. Uh, enjoy that the, those motorcycles that you used to own. Now you can't because you have a wife that tells you you can't own them. <laughs> you know, enjoy that time and just appreciate its humility because that's life. It's all about the journey, man. And uh, that's 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 an easy one. That's awesome. I like that. It's okay. Um, actually, the last podcast I just did was um, I was talking about you know, the ups and downs that we go through, the ebbs and flows of our productivity and our, our whatevers. And I was and ultimately, I think if I was to break it down into like the really, really the common you know denominator there is it's okay to go through those lower periods. Don't stress about it. Don't get anxious. Just ride it. You know, it's okay. Um, yeah, I tell that to, stu- you know, a lot of students who come through and they'll, you know, they'll ask, um, or even their patients of mine, right. They like, how did you know, or when did you decide? And I was like, I don't know. I, to be honest, it was for me, <laughs> I decided very late. So if you haven't made up your mind yet, it's okay. I, th- I think that's really good advice. Yeah. Um, and the final question is with everything that you've accomplished and you are accomplishing and doing and building, how much of this would you say is due to hard work and how much is due to luck? Oh, man, you know, we were talking at the early stages of the podcast uh, about, you know, behind the scenes. And, you know, I'm, I'm a faith based individual, so I don't want to bestow my personal beliefs upon anyone. But I'm a firm believer that you are put through everything for a reason that your, you know, rejection is your uh, creator's uh, protection, whatever your creator is, whether it's, you know, God or or, you know, if you're Muslim, what, it doesn't matter what it is. If, if, it, if you're rejected in any way, shape or form, if a door is shut in front of you, that's your destiny's protection over you. It means that that's not your, your path. Um, you know, I do work, I do work very hard behind the scenes, six to seven days a week. Um, and, you know, I know you do as well. And uh, I would say it's, it's mostly, it's mostly definitely, you know, my creators, you know, steering me the, the direction that he wants me to go. Um, but I, I don't take the lazy route and just watch for the uh, Hansel and Gretel pebbles to, to, to find. I do. <laughs> I do grind through. away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I do grind away as well. Pretty hard. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. It's got to be a bit of both. Right. Um, Absolutely. I, I like that. The, the faith aspect of it, too. Um, you know, there's a lot of different words or terms you could use, but there's um, this overarching sort of guidance or, or something that's going on behind the scenes. And, and I think the word luck maybe is a little uh, tricky there, but there's something else happening that's beyond our control. You can call it luck or whatever, but uh, absolutely. Definitely. No. And, and to your point, actually, I would use those synonymously because I, I've been in, in some of these scenarios. I'm like, how in the world was I situated next to that person who introduced me to that person? And it's like, that's definitely the, it's, it's not my hard work that I sat in that chair behind that person. Right. You know, it's just, yeah, yeah. but it's your hard work that you took the opportunity of being there, um, you know, and took it and, and created something from that. So yeah, that's awesome, man. Uh, the, where, where can people get in touch with you? So directly with what's the uh, email or website or in social media, what do you like? Sure. Yeah. No, if, if anybody has any questions out there, wants to pick my brain, my personal email is D R G O U L D. 2020 at gmail.com so that's dr gold 2020 at gmail.com um i'm also on most you know social media facebook um instagram linkedin i don't do twitter or tiktok i i just have never i've tried and i failed miserably so <laughs> i'm going to keep it to my grassroots uh, style and, but anybody if you have a question out there you know please don't hesitate to ask and like dr cyan and i were saying you know if one of you has a question that means there's more of you out there with questions and please do um you know subscribe to dr science channel uh follow because there are so many wonderful interviews he, he has had over the past you know couple of years now that i've learned from and i've learned from dr Sayan and 
that's what we're all about here, guys. We're, we're here to help each other. And uh, please just don't be bashful to ask because that's the only way you're going to grow and learn. Thank you. Thanks, all. You basically closed the podcast for me. So thanks. I appreciate that. <laughs> that's, that. That's, the, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Awesome. Thanks, Saul. So, so, you know, um, Dr. Gould, really, really appreciate every, everything that you shared with us. I know there's so, so, so much more to learn on this, but you, you just presented, you know, these important topics and, and, and uh, discussion points so well that I think it's going to help anybody out there who's interested in getting this to kind of get their feet wet and start to, to learn a little bit more. So thank you very much for that. And thank you for everything that you're doing in the industry and, and for the profession as well. Really appreciate that. Thank you, my friend. Well, thank, thank you so much for having me. And uh, I hope to uh, I actually greatly look forward to seeing you here in just a few weeks at the great uh, Vision Expo Academy. Yeah, absolutely, man. Really looking forward to that. All right, guys, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode.